Each year, it is estimated that there are over 30,000 football stadiums worldwide, although only around 400 meet FIFA's strict standards to be considered high-performance venues. But how are these impressive stadiums, which represent the forefront of sports, constructed? To better understand, let's take a tour of some of the most modern stadiums today. The history of football stadiums dates back to the 19th century, when the sport began to gain popularity in England. The first fields were simple playing grounds surrounded by wooden fences to control spectator entry. As football grew, these fields evolved to accommodate more fans and stands and more permanent structures began to appear. One of the oldest and most emblematic stadiums is Hampton Park in Scotland, inaugurated in 1903, which for years was the largest in the world. In England, Wembley Stadium, built in 1923, became a football icon with its famous twin towers and a capacity of 127,000 people at its inauguration. By the mid-20th century, stadium construction expanded globally, featuring more modern infrastructures and increasing capacities. The Maracanã Stadium in Brazil, inaugurated in 1950 for the World Cup, symbolises this era, being the largest stadium in the world at the time, with a capacity of over 200,000 spectators. Over time, stadiums began to incorporate advanced technology, enhancing the spectator experience and the broadcasting of matches. In recent decades, the trend has been to build multifunctional stadiums with state-of-the-art facilities designed for both sporting events and performances. Allianz Arena in Munich and Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid are examples of this new era, featuring illuminated facades and retractable turf technology. So what is the process of constructing a state-of-the-art stadium? The construction of stadiums begins with the designs and blueprints, where architects and engineers collaborate to create a stadium that is not only striking, but also efficient and resilient, capable of supporting hundreds of thousands of enthusiastic fans jumping. Before any construction starts, a feasibility study is conducted to determine if the project is viable from economic, technical and legal perspectives. This study includes site selection, cost estimation and environmental impact assessment. Next, architects and designers develop detailed stadium plans covering the arrangement of the stands, the design of the playing field, the structure of the roof, spectator facilities such as locker rooms, VIP areas, press zones and evacuation areas. Additionally, aesthetic and symbolic aspects that may represent the team or the city are considered. Meanwhile, structural engineers are responsible for designing the stadium's framework, ensuring it can withstand heavy loads like the weight of spectators and potential seismic movements. They also decide on the types of materials to use, such as steel and concrete, which are among the most durable, to support the forces exerted by the spectators. The next step in construction is site preparation, a fundamental stage that employs heavy machinery to perform tasks that can generally take several months. This process includes demolishing existing structures, diverting public utilities and levelling the ground. If the stadium design includes underground levels, such as parking lots, locker rooms or movable turf, corresponding excavation is carried out. This phase is crucial as any errors in site preparation could compromise the stadium's future stability. Once the site is ready, the construction of the main stadium structure begins, starting with the foundations, which are essential for supporting the entire complex. Depending on the soil characteristics, different types of foundations may be used, such as concrete slabs or deep piles that can exceed 20 meters in depth. The next step involves erecting the columns and beams that will form the main structure. At this stage, key elements like the stands, stairs and access ramps begin to take shape. For this work, thousands of tons of steel are used and the structures are typically assembled using large-scale bolts. This allows for future removal or modification of structures in a more economical and efficient manner. In modern stadiums, 
Installing a roof is essential to ensure that events can take place without interruptions caused by adverse weather conditions. The roof is placed after completing the main structure. Some of these roofs are retractable, adding an extra level of complexity to their construction, as they require a higher budget and advanced technology. In addition to protecting spectators, these roofs play a fundamental role in maintaining the turf, ensuring it remains in optimal condition for play. Only in these roofs can up to 10,000 tons of steel be used for their construction, equivalent to the weight of 52 Boeing 747 airplanes. In the next stage of the project, the stands where spectators will be seated are constructed. These stands are built in sections, paying special attention to ensuring that all rows offer excellent visibility of the playing field. Generally, they are designed in rectangular or circular shapes, maximizing all possible angles so that the public can enjoy the spectacle. The inclination angle of the stands is a crucial aspect. If it is too steep or too shallow, it can significantly affect the clarity with which the playing field is observed. For this reason, Architects devote special care to this area of the project, ensuring that each spectator's visual experience is optimal. Simultaneously, work is carried out on installing the stadium's internal areas, including locker rooms, offices, VIP zones, boxes, restaurants and restrooms. Accessibility is also ensured by constructing ramps and installing elevators, making sure that all individuals regardless of mobility, can move comfortably throughout the stadium. Additionally, new stadiums incorporate sensors and biometric detection systems to manage the flow of people, ensuring more orderly access and preventing overcrowding. During this phase, security systems are also defined and installed, such as surveillance cameras and access control systems, as well as lighting and giant screens. These screens have significantly evolved with technological advancements and are now larger and higher in resolution, contributing to a more immersive and attractive spectator experience. These elements not only enhance the stadium's functionality, but also add value to the experience of attending a live event. Now it's time to construct the playing field. Many believe that the turf is planted directly in the stadium, but in most cases, this is not true. Cultivating natural grass on a football field is a complex, lengthy and costly process, but it remains the preferred option for stadiums worldwide due to its benefits for the sport, even serving as a reference for the development of artificial turf. Creating a football field from scratch can take anywhere from six months to several years. Since cultivating grass directly in the stadium would require keeping it closed during that time, Pre-cultivated turf from specialised farms is used instead, which is then precisely placed to achieve uniform coverage. This process begins at the farms with soil preparation, which is levelled and treated with solutions that prevent weed germination. Next, resilient grass varieties are selected and sown using specialised tools to ensure even distribution. During growth, the turf receives continuous care including fertilization, irrigation and regular mowing to keep it dense and healthy. Once the turf meets all requirements, it is cut, rolled and stored for transport. In some cases, instead of rolls, the grass is cut into long strips that are carefully folded for installation. At the same time, in some stadiums, athletic tracks are installed which must meet high standards of cushioning and elasticity to ensure athlete safety. These tracks consist of two layers, a base of polyurethane mixed with rubber, providing firmness and elasticity, and a top layer of polyurethane coloured with rubber granules, giving texture and colour to the surface. Transforming stadiums to accommodate different events is another innovative aspect of sports design. An example of this is the Santiago Bernabeu, where retractable turf is a technological marvel that allows the playing field to be stored beneath the stadium in a structure called the Hippogeo when not in use, freeing up space for other events. The turf moves in six enormous trays, 
each weighing between 1,300 and 1,500 tons, and the entire removal and storage process takes about six hours. In the Hippogeo, the turf is maintained in optimal conditions through an advanced climate control system that regulates temperature, humidity, and light. This system even includes the injection of CEO2 to enhance photosynthesis, ensuring that the turf remains healthy and ready for the next match. The turf receives 16 hours of light per day, simulating the natural sunrise and sunset cycle, and is watered with specialized systems that also allow fertigation, meaning the application of nutrients along with irrigation. Additionally, to prevent the introduction of diseases, all personnel working on the turf wear disinfected clothing and disposable shoe covers. Precision in installing and maintaining the turf is crucial, as even the penalty spot must fit perfectly when the trays are redeployed in the stadium. This innovative system not only maximizes stadium usage, but also ensures that the turf is in the best possible condition for each match. The next step in stadium construction involves installing the lighting system and incorporating advanced technology. All stadiums implement high power lighting systems that allow for night matches, ensuring optimal visibility for both spectators in the stadium and broadcast transmissions. According to FIFA recommendations, the minimum illuminance for matches is 500 lux, although in larger tournaments like the World Cup, this figure rises to between 1500 and 2000 lux of average illuminance. To achieve these standards, hundreds of LED floodlights are installed on towers and roof rails. Energy consumption in a stadium during a match is significant. It is estimated that, during 90 minutes of play, a stadium consumes approximately 25,000 kilowatts, equivalent to the monthly consumption of 93 average households. This high energy consumption is an important consideration in the design and operation of modern stadiums, which seek to balance energy efficiency with the need to provide a high quality experience for fans and broadcasts. Another crucial aspect of modern stadiums is the communication network. In the digital age, improving internet access within the stadium has become essential so that attendees can enjoy advanced services such as ordering food from their phones or watching real-time replays. Seamless connectivity throughout the venue not only enhances the spectator experience, but also allows organizers to offer innovative services. The sound system is equally fundamental. Dozens of speakers and subwoofers are carefully distributed to ensure an immersive acoustic experience. Stadium design focuses on minimizing sound and visual pollution to the outside ensuring that the spectacle remains within the confines of the venue without affecting surrounding areas. In the final stages of the stadium, furniture installation takes place, including seats in the stands. These seats, made from specially designed polymers, are built to withstand years of constant use without losing their quality. In addition to their durability, the seats are integrated into the stadium's visual design forming patterns that can represent the team's name or logo, turning the stands into a distinctive and visually impactful element. Painting is also carried out where necessary, although many modern stadiums are designed to be visually striking and durable without relying on constant painting. This is achieved by using materials like stainless steel, which not only contributes to the stadium's aesthetics, but also ensures its resistance and longevity. The final stage in stadium construction is commissioning, a key moment in the process. During this phase, the investor receives authorization for the acceptance committee to carry out the stadium's installation and evaluation. Before the definitive handover and official inauguration, several friendly matches are recommended in the new venue. This allows for the identification and correction of any deficiencies ensuring that the stadium is in optimal condition for its opening. And that's how million dollar stadiums are built. What did you think of the process? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In the windows you'll see next, there are more videos that might catch your attention. 
feel free to watch one. See you next time.